So this video is to show you how to reactivate a lyophilized culture. These are the bacteria that you get from your Carolina kit that are freeze dried and they need to be activated and grown in media before you can use them in any experiments. Before you start, make sure you make a 10% bleach solution. This is what you use as a disinfectant and you'll use this to disinfect the surface you're working on, both before you start as well as after you complete this exercise. Also get a container of isopropanol ready, a, a small container of isopropanol that you're gonna use for tool disinfection. And of course, whenever you're working um, with any of the labs, you should be wearing your appropriate personal protective equipment, which is gloves, eye protection, and the apron that came with your kit. If you need further information about any one of these things, there are videos that I include uh, in the page dedicated to the lab that you're working on. Um, they'd be entitled Making a Disinfectant Solution or Disinfecting Surfaces. Um, and so you can watch videos on how to do any of these items if you need to. So it's important to reactivate the bacterial cultures at the appropriate time. You received four lyophilized bacteria and so make sure um, you're reading carefully the instructions as to when you're supposed to reactivate them. So for the first lab activity that we're going to do, aseptic technique, you'll have to reactivate serratia. So that's the bacteria that you should reactivate. Another bacteria called micrococcus, you will reactivate when you are starting the isolation and streak plate procedure. That's the second lab we'll do. And then the final two bacteria, staphylococcus and E. coli, you will reactivate when you start the selective and differential media lab. Notice I have a container of lyophilized bacteria and the goal is to activate it and get it growing in this tube of broth. So you're gonna need um, your alcohol lamp and something to light it with. Um, just keep this on for the period of time you need to complete this activity. Don't leave an open flame on. Um, there's a metal tab on top and so it's easiest to remove that first before you start working. There's a rubber stopper uh, that actually holds the bacteria in the vial, but that metal um, cap is helpful to remove it. And then you're going to need a, a sterile pipette. And so only open this when you're ready to go. So um, the f I'm going to grab the pipette out by the bulb end. And then notice how I open this tube. I'm going to open it with my pinky finger of my dominant hand, and then you flame the mouth of that tube. So the goal is to get about um, a milliliter or so of this broth that will be used to activate the culture. So about the length of the pipette. Um, you don't have to suck it all the way up into the bowl pull part. Uh, and then before I close the tube, I flame it again. Uh, and then now I can open the rubber stopper, and then I'm going to place the broth that I have in the pipette into the bacterial, um, the freeze-dried bacteria. And so that liquid is going to reactivate the bacteria and it's supposed to sit for about 30 seconds um, to let that, nutri that nutrient-rich media actually activate those bacterial cells that have been dried. So just wait 30 seconds or so uh, and then once that 30 seconds is up, what you're going to do is transfer all of that liquid, including the, the bacterial cells, into the media container that, that we uh, just got our sample from. So I'm going to use the same pipette that I've been holding. I didn't put it down because I didn't want to get any... Um, since it's relatively sterile. So right now I'm drawing up the liquid and dispensing it, just trying to mix it well, trying to not introduce a lot of air bubbles. And so then finally I'm going to draw up all of that liquid with all the bacteria. So you wanna get as much as you can out, but again, trying not to get a lot of air, drop, air bubbles in there. And so then again, when I open this tube, I'm gonna flame the mouth of the tube again, just passing it through uh, the flame and then dispense all of those bacterial cells uh, back into this tube. And so again, prior to closing this, I'm going to flame the tube and recap it. 
So now make sure you disinfect the pipette by putting it in the isopropanol for 30 minutes before disposal. The vial that's now empty needs to be disinfected and that goes in bleach, 10% bleach for 24 hours. And the tube that you just set up that now has the bacteria growing needs to grow for somewhere between 24 and 72 hours with the lids loosened. Um, and you'll know when there's growth because the clear liquid will become cloudy. That term is turbidity. And so when you see that turbidity, that will indicate that the bacteria has grown sufficiently.